You may be wondering why I brought back my old glasses for this video, and I just wanted to try and pull off the Cory from Halloween Ends look. But uh, I need longer, longer hair. Now moving on to the best lists, um, obviously I gotta start off with my honorable mentions for the best movies I saw in the year 2022 that was released in 2022, and it was my first time watching them. Honorable mentions are in alphabetical order, Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever, The Black Phone, Enola Holmes 2, Halloween Ends, yes I am serious, and stop calling me Shirley. Moon Age Daydream, Top Gun 2 Maverick, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Those are my honorable mentions for best movies that I saw for the first time in 2022 that was released in 2022. Number 10 is Babylon. Yes, this was a movie that I... I... I don't know. There's just something about it. Originally... I was on a first time viewing, I'm like, yeah, it could be top 10, but then thinking about it, it fell off my top 10 list, but then I kind of, the more I thought about it, I was like, that was some damn fine filmmaking in that film, and uh, especially certain moments, certain scenes, and I'm just like, yeah, I have to, I have to acknowledge it, so that's why Babylon got number 10. Number nine is The Fablemans, and yes, Steven Spielberg's kind of biopic, kind of not, but weirdly true, <laughs> has lots of heart, lots of family. <laughs> it's hard to acknowledge how good of a filmmaker Steven Spielberg is, because you know that already. <laughs> There's, what could I possibly add? And every, everything is on display in this film on a technical level of how he films and what he gets out of his actors and whatnot. Um, and this movie, definitely check it out, especially if you like biopics or you like movies that are um, more drama family type films. And uh, coming of age as well, yeah. I'm here to interrupt this video. I apologize. Uh, I want to just very quickly, because I forgot to say it in my first initial recording, I, on Patreon, has started to actually do write-out opinion piece type. Uh, basically, just watch this episode, so my reviews of movies, but it's in written format, and uh, I've kind of started doing that uh, with Patreon, and uh, uh, my first one was on The Fablemans, so if you want to hear my opinions on the movie, it is on, available on Patreon uh, in written format, and uh, I'm also kind of doing it as a bit of a rough because hypothetically, in the future, I might actually turn that into a just-watched episode. So, it's kind of a very quick way I can get my reviews out there. So, if you feel like supporting me, uh, check out my Patreon. And uh, thank you very much to my Patreons, because I didn't actually record me saying thank you very much. So, uh, I'm going to put that in this video now. So, now... Uh, back to my top 10. Number 8 is The Menu. A movie... Oh, gosh, I'll remember my first time seeing this movie. I'm not going to spoil anything. Um, but all I can say is, when I went to see this movie, all I saw was um, this poster, which is somewhere on screen. And so, literally, the only thing I thought was like, oh, this is, must be some like romantic comedy uh, movie, uh, I guess I'm assuming a couple goes to a restaurant and, you know, some shenanigans happen and whatnot. And, you know, it's a, you know, a nice down to earth type movie. And I, I, I kind of felt like that because with all the superhero movies and blockbusters, I'm like, it's nice to have a nice normal movie. And that is what I went thought process wise into the menu. And oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I can say the two movies that this movie sort of remind me of in the second half and the problem is 
I could would consider that spoilers because there was specifically the specifically one where I was like, this movie happened a couple years ago, and I'm like, that was kind of the same sort of ending in a sense, and I felt like if I say what the movie it is that I felt it was too similar to, um, that spoils the menu. And if there's one thing I learned about this film is you don't spoil the menu. <laughs> Oh, gosh, I love this film. Number seven is Avatar, The Way of the Water, or Way of Water. Speaking of water, always hydrate yourself when you're drinking alcohol. It's Here's the thing. As much as I would love to put Avatar lower on my list, and by lower I mean down the list near, near closer to ten, uh, the problem is... The technicality of it, the amount of effort and filmmaking prowess to make this film, the fact that it took 14 years, I appreciate so much of the effort and just visually what we got. I saw it in 3D and IMAX with the high frame rate. Yeah, it looks a little bit video game cutscene level, but I didn't care because I visually love looking at it. And then... On top of that, um, the story didn't feel like it was necessarily ripping off <laughs> like the first one did. But then again, it's one of those things where it's like, I know there's going to be a couple more after. Would love to see where it goes, where it ends up. Where is the Avatar franchise going? So I'm very excited to find out. And the second one is a very good holdover. See you two years from now to see if... Avatar Free, Fire Kingdom, <laughs> or Fire Nation Attacks, I don't know. Number six is Elvis, and that is a great biopic. I really enjoyed it. Love music and all that, and love the performances. As much as Tom Hanks did a great job in Pinocchio, this is the movie that, if he wasn't going to be nominated, this is the movie it would be for. <laughs> And that's not taking a diss to anybody else. I am absolutely sure Austin Butler uh, should be nominated, if not win for Elvis. But I don't think it's going to happen uh, because I think there's another movie that came out this year that uh, might be more of a for for front runner, I should say. That's not to diss Austin Butler's performance as Elvis. And the director, I just, I feel overall the director has done better before. I think The Great Gatsby, the best movie he's ever done. And so Elvis is a great movie. It's just I feel his last work was just that much more better. So it's kind of a me problem, I guess. But on its own, Elvis is definitely deserving of the number six spot for best movie I've seen. Number five is Nope. Yep, seeing it on IMAX, the spectacle of it, just just the advertisements hyping up for this film, which I'm I'm glad I opened my eyes for, because originally I was like I'm not gonna watch any trailers for Nope, so I can go into it blindly, but I'm so glad I did look at the trailers, because that was part of the experience of Nope was seeing the trailers and then seeing the film, because of the expectations and everything. It's like it plays on that spectacle and all that, and uh, Nope is amazing. I do love Jordan Peele's trilogy so far, or anthology, I guess you could say. <laughs> Get Out, Us, and then Nope, and uh, can't wait to see what he does next, and uh, I hope to have my review of Us and the Black Phone, or not Us, uh, Nope and the Black Phone. I hope to have that review out uh, by Halloween of this year. <laughs> Sorry again. Number four is Gail Del Toro's Pinocchio. Yes, absolutely, 100%. This being one of two movies that came out in 2022, that I saw in 2022, that, uh, that made me cry. And I... <sighs> And I don't, it's it's so good. The animation is amazing and mesmerizing to look at. Um, but then on top of that, you got amazing voice cast, like excellent. And then Gil Del Toro style, uh, especially with some of the designs, I'm just like amazing. And then the fact that at the end, 
I saw it again. I watched it twice. And even on a second time viewing, I was still... Actually, I think I was crying more on the second time viewing. <laughs> because I knew what was going to happen, in a sense. So it's kind of like... Shit. <laughs> it was number four for me. And uh, will always have a special place in my heart. This this version of Pinocchio. Number three. And uh, I'm going to be honest. I had a really tough time between this one and Gil del Toro's Pinocchio for the f number third spot. But I, the reason I gave it to Bullet Train is just how fun of an action type um even it even has some a uh, lot of like mystery pieces like in terms of uh there's a lot of moving pieces there's a lot of almost clue le type levels of reveals and stuff in this film uh backstory and how they all intertwine and bullet train is just from start to finish is highly entertaining very fun uh, very action, very, like, it was just a fun overall movie and really highly enjoyed it. I just, on a, even on a technical level, everything was pieced together and all that and um, some surprise cameos and cast members. I, I loved it. I loved Bullet Train. And uh, even on a rewatch, I was like, yeah, no, I still still love it. Number two is Glass Onion, and it is brilliantly stupid. <laughs> so dumb, it's br okay. I, I, it's so I love it. It's this is an example of an excellently crafted script, um, and even execution wise. But the thing is, the thing I love most about Glass Onion is on a first time viewing, I was like. It was okay. It was it was pretty good. Like I enjoyed it, but it just didn't feel like at the levels of say Knives Out, the first one. The weird thing is, it's like this was actually much lower on my top ten list when I when I first watched it because I watched it in theaters too, and so I watched it and I was like, oh yeah, that was good. It's just something didn't feel as good or amazing. But on a rewatch is when this movie really started to shine. And I just I just loved also the metaphors and how they work, where it's like, it's like a glass onion. What is a glass onion? It's something so clear that you can just, even though it looks like it's densely layered, its center is just clear. And it's brilliant representation of this entire film this film works so well on its own you don't need to see knives out and if you do see knives out you get another awesome funny dramatic tale with daniel craig's detective and i just want to really say this movie was absolutely deserving of the number two spot and I hate that on my first time viewing, I did not realize how good of a film it was until my second and then even my third time watching the film. And yeah, I watched it three times and I was like, I love it. Scream 5, I hope you're paying attention. Um, this movie is, that's how you do references to other movies or name drops of other movies in your movie. This is how you do it. <laughs> Anyways, that leads us to the number one movie I saw for the first time in 2022. And that was released in 2022. And it is a movie. The, f the first movie of the year to make me totally cry. I was absolute mess. But not... Like, yes, emotionally I was a little bit sad. But it had me crying of laughter. I could not believe what I was watching. I was an absolute mess in this movie at several points. I was, it was, because the theater that I went to see it in, it was uh, decently full, maybe like 15 people were in the theater, uh, including me and my friend. And I was just an absolute mess in the film, watching the film. And I was holding back my noises because I was just like, I was like, oh, I don't want to ruin the experience for anyone else, but I'm absolutely just dying. I'm like, <laughs> like, you know, making noises, and I'm like trying not to make noises. I'm just, 
oh my gosh, this movie. I could not believe what I was watching. Absolutely absurd, but absolutely deep and meaningful. Um depending on how invested you are in the film. Like, you may brush aside this film for being stupid or silly or just shock, but it's not. There is a deep meaning behind it, and I loved it so much. Um, The best multiverse movie of the year. (laughs) And it is everything, everywhere, all at once. In my opinion, is... The best movie I've seen this year. And it is a movie that broke into my top 10 favorite movies of all time. And I couldn't believe it that I even, for a brief second, even considered. I was like, for a brief second, I actually considered, did this movie beat Inception? Because Inception's my favorite film of all time. And I even the fact that I even consider that says how how good of a film everything everywhere all at once was and uh, you're just gonna have to wait until I do my top 500 favorite movies of all time list and do an update of it to find out where exactly it ended up placing and uh, even on a rewatch every time I show this movie to a, a friend or a family member I'm just like I'm still crying a bit at this film (laughs) you to let me know what your favorite or best movie in your opinion that came out this year and uh, maybe even give me your worst or least favorite film let me know in the comments below anyways thank you very much for watching i want you to have a nice day or night it's just dumb